Welcome to the Rustic Garden. Today is March 8th. This is the third video in my Do It Yourself series where I'll be focusing on a lot this year on garden recipes. How do you use peppermint oil, neem oil, aspirin in your garden? I'll do future videos on those products. Today I really wanted to focus on selecting the right soap for your garden recipes because there's so many out there that you can pick the wrong one and the wrong soaps can damage your plant leaves. So tip number one, no matter what recipe you're following for a do-it-yourself spray, it's on you to test spray the plants you're going to be spraying. What works for me may not work for you. What works in the spring may not work in the summer. And I'll explain that as we go along today in this video. Test spraying means you make your spray, make sure you track the recipe so that you know if you need to subtract or add to it, and then you go out and you spray a couple of leaves of the different plants that you're going to be using the spray on. Wait 48 hours. If there's no damage, then go ahead and use that spray. But it's really on you to test spray. It's so, so important. I have in the past damaged dozens of tomato plants and plants by putting a spray together, going out there, covering everything, and then the next day I see the damage. So please don't do that. Now, when you are going to make an insecticidal soap, you want to find the soap that is closest to pure soap, like Castile soap. That soap has been made for centuries. It's just uh, vegetable oil, animal fat. They make soap, it's pure. It's the fatty acids from that soap process that kills soft body insects. So you're using these insecticidal soaps on soft bodied insects. The uh, beetles, the hard shelled insects, they don't really get affected too much by the soap. So insecticidal soaps, just plain soap and water, really target the soft body insects. Now when you go to the store, if you can't find the Castile soap, you usually have to find that online. You're going to look on the shelves and I'm going to go over these different products with you and tell you what not to buy. So when you're looking on the shelf, you're first of all you're going to dish soap. You're not using hand soap, so you want to find dish soap. When you take a look at the Dawn here, it's an ultra, means it's concentrated, antibacterial, two times more cleaning power for grease or something in there, orange scent, probably artificial. You don't want this. It's got too many additives to it. Degreasers are not soap. You just want the soap. So I would skip over that one. Then you might see Ajax, 100% grease removal. It says um, some sort of addition in there. I don't even know what that is. I never heard of it. Uh, Ultra, super degreaser, Lemon, probably again, not pure lemon oil. Too many additives, you don't want that on your plant leaves. It's the additives that can damage the plant leaves. Then you come over here, you see Dawn, antibacterial, hand soap also, two times more something in there, you don't want that. Now, I know because we're all gardening in different areas, you may not be able to find the perfect soap. So if you have to go with an ultra, this is Dawn Ultra, but it doesn't have any scent or any additions to it. So plain old straight Dawn Ultra will work if that's all you can find. I've used this before, but when you use this, you're going to have to cut it back based on the recipes that I'm giving you because I'm going to go to these soaps that are a little more pure, less degreasers, less chemicals in there. Ivory I've used for years. And again, you just read the label and you just don't want to see what was on there on this product. So you want the simplest form of ivory soap. And this is new because organic has been a big push over the years. This is free from everything. So this is Nature Promise. This is the giant brand liquid dish soap. And this is really good to use. And you can use both of these at the strengths I'm going to talk about for the recipes. And again, if you can find Castile soap online, go ahead and use that. So just to recap. Number one, always test spray. That's on you. Number two, when you see all these different colors and stuff like that, that's usually a sign that you've got like degreasers, you've got antibacterial stuff in there. You might even have bleach in there. You don't want those. So we're going to go with the pure soaps. Now, or as pure as you can get to them. Now, again, today we're just focusing on the soap and using that to make an insecticide, insecticidal soap. And I'm also going to show you how you would use it for the peppermint oil or for the neem oil. But just to help you understand that you're going to use the soap differently for the oils, I'll have separate videos on all those um, probably by the end of today. So if you're watching this one, a couple hours, I'm going to have videos on those oils. 
Now, again, test spray, because when you go online, you're going to see anywhere from three to four to five tablespoons of soap added to one gallon of water. And they can all work. But what you want to do is start with a lower amount, use that recipe, and build up to the higher amount. Never go to the highest amount and work backwards. So you find uh, one tablespoon. I'm going to always start with two, and I found two work pretty well. And it's just two to four tablespoons per gallon. If I was using the Blue Dawn, which is an Ultra, two tablespoons of that is going to be much more concentrated and powerful than this. So that's two tablespoons. Stop there, give it a shake. You want to see how much it's bubbling and I feel like you could start with this and see if it takes care of the soft bodies insects. If it doesn't, you find that it's not really working well, rather than go, you know, like I said, rather than starting at four tablespoons per gallon, then you would go to three. And the reason you have to do this is because you have to test out the soap you have. If this was Castile, you could start with the four tablespoons. You may not need it, but you could certainly start with it. And that's what your soapy water spray is going to look like for controlling soft body insects. It would go into a sprayer. I'm going to do a full series on sprayers on the Rusty Garden show later this week. But here's just an example. This is a half gallon sprayer. I like to make all my recipes in a one gallon container. This is one gallon of water. And then I just pour it from here into here. You can, you know, try and just make a quart batch and stuff like that, but then you're getting into teaspoons and it gets, to me, you can make an error that way. So if you can just go and grab a one gallon container, save it, make a one gallon batch. And then you would just, let's see if I can do this without spilling it, fill up your sprayer just like that. You know, shake your products before you fill up your container. Now, this I just wanted to show you real quick. It'll be in the Rusted Garden show. But it's a great hand sprayer when you don't have a lot of plants. You would just pump it up. I'm not going to spray it in here. And once you press it, because it's pressurized, you can turn this upside down. You can get under the leaves. So when you're using the soapy water sprays, the insecticidal soap, you want to spray the tops of the leaves, the undersides of the leaves, and you really want to coat your plant. Now we'll get to the oil in a second. But before we get to that, a couple of places I wouldn't use the soap is on lettuces and some of your lighter greens like spinach, arugula, and stuff like that. You don't want to be eating the soap. The plants are pretty fragile. They don't often get soft body insect issues. You could go ahead and do it, but you're going to probably have to wash the plants out in your garden before you eat it, which means I would just take a hose, spray it down, wash everything off of it. Because they're fragile leaves, even if they're not damaged by this, when you bring it inside, you're going to have to wash them, you're going to have to get the soap off, and then the leaves get all beat up and they're just not really good in your salad. Otherwise, soapy water spray can be used on all your different plants, but you want to test spray them. Now, I wanted to, I said I would tell you why you need to test spray. So in the spring, Coming out of winter, the weather's cooler. Plants, leaves are nice and, um, oh gosh, I hate when I lose words. We covered a lot with selecting the right soap. I wanna make sure we don't lose the recipe and how you use it in your garden. The insecticidal soaps or the soapy water sprays, and again, this is just soap and water, so this is really a soapy water spray. We can make more complicated insecticidal soaps by adding in peppermint oil and different oils, and we'll do that in future videos. But just plain old soap and water, you can make a batch up just like this, and it can sit forever because it's just soap and water. Soft-bodied insects is what this works on, and that's mostly going to be aphids. 
Uh, aphids, you'll see, they can be green, they can be red, sometimes they change color based on what they're pulling out of your plant, but you're going to know an aphid infestation. They're going to be all over the stem, there'll be hundreds of them. They're going to be under the leaves too. There's going to be uh, large ones, there'll be smaller ones, there'll be all kinds under there. So you really want to spray the stem nicely, soak it down, and to get the undersides of the leaves. And when you contact the soft-bodied insects, when you contact the aphids, the soap really starts doing its thing. Um, you can actually rinse the plants off if you want, like a couple hours later if you want to wash the soap off, because that soap will start sinking into uh, the aphids and, and doing its thing. Also by taking a jet of water and spraying your tomato plant or spraying the plant that has them, you're going to knock those insects off the plant and they're just not strong enough to crawl back up and get to where they are. So spraying later really does take the soap off the plant, also knocks the soft-bodied aphids off of the plant. How often would you spray? You probably only need to spray once, but go ahead and spray that day. Wait 24 hours, go inspect the plant. If you still see them on there, you can spray again and that should take care of them. Um, you don't need to use a maintenance spray of the soapy water. Only spray it when you see the aphids show up. Now, sometimes you get aphids if you're overfeeding your plants too much nitrogen. They get really um, fast green growth. That attracts the aphids. The leaves are thin. They're juicy. The aphids come and they start you know, sucking the sap out of your plant. So you can also manage insects sometimes by making sure you don't over fertilize your plants with uh, nitrogen. All right, let's get back to the video. Rigid, they're rigid. They're completely filled of the uh, pterygoid pressure. Because it's cool, the leaves are at their highest capacity of sort of being pressurized, so to speak, where they're nice and firm. When you spray onto them, they're going to be able to handle that spray better. Then when you come summer, when you notice it gets hot, you see the leaves get limp. They, they lose the pterygoid pressure, they lose the pressure inside, the leaves are trying to survive. That weakened leaf, if it's hit with the soapy water spray or another spray that did fine in the spring when it was a cooler, you could damage them. So you want to pay attention to that. As the seasons progress and it gets hotter, you want to spray more in the morning when it's cooler or you want to spray more in the evening when it's cooler. But don't spray in full sun, don't spray in full heat because the leaf drops and it's weaker and it can be damaged by your sprays. I hope that makes sense and sorry about losing my words. Again, as I've said before, turning 52, things just slip out of your mind. All right, that's the setup for your basis for your insecticidal soaps. Four tablespoons per gallon of water. Start with two, get, uh, two tablespoons and work your way up until you find the right mix that works for you. And again, on the Castile soaps or the soaps that have the less detergents and additives, you can get closer to the four tablespoons. If you were going to be using something like a concentrate, you probably want to start with one tablespoon. Now, when you use soap for oils, and I'll go over the neem oil recipe in another video, but you can see this floating on there. Let's see if I can tilt it a little bit. You see the oil floating. When you're using oils and water, obviously they don't mix. What you're trying to do is use your soaps just enough to have that oil get dispersed all the way through the water so that you get these fine um, droplets of oil dispersed through here and then when you spray your leaves, you get a nice fine coating of the oil. Now, you don't just go in and throw two, and let's pretend this is a gallon, okay? So again, we're in this gallon over here. All I do, if this were a gallon, I put in a couple of drops. As soon as I put the drops in, you can see the oil starts to concentrate. You're going to mix it up. I can see that doing that, the oil is still on top. So I would add in a couple more drops. Mix it up. This is a lot less than the tablespoon I was using. And you can see that it's starting to disperse, but pretty quickly it starts coming back up to the surface. A couple more drops. Mix it through. And it's getting dispersed better through the water. Now, 
when this is in a gallon container and it's still, you don't see it floating or coming to the top. Eventually it will as I'm talking, the oil will float back up. That's about the ratio you want. You want just enough oil in there that when you put it into your container and you would shake it, it's going to disperse through here. It's going to stay dispersed for 30 seconds, 60 seconds. And then in 60 seconds, you would shake it again. So just shake this every time um, you're going to, you know, move to a new plant and spray and you'll have the oil dispersed. The reason you want to do that is because now you're adding oil to your plant leaf and you're adding soap to your plant leaf. The more things you add to the plant leaf, the greater risk you have of damaging that leaf. So you want to cut back on something. So you again, just want enough oil that when it's mixed, the oil disperses through the liquid. You can spray for 30 seconds, 60 seconds, get, get all that microscopic oil beads onto your plant leaf, shake it again, move to the next plant. All right, hopefully that makes sense. Now, if we go over to the concentrate, you see you got the oil there. Very quickly, it pushes the oil away. And you can see, I even mix this. This one gets soapier, the oil's dispersed much more quickly with less oil, I mean with less soap, you put in a few more drops, that's going to be plenty. That's about as half, half as much soap in this one than that one. And that's why you really want to just add it slowly. If we went right to this, you're used to using a concentration If you're like used this. to using this soap that has less degreasers and harsh chemicals in it, and you, let's just say you were using a tablespoon and then you go to something like this and you follow the old recipe based on this, a tablespoon of the new soap may be too much for your plant. So you really have to pay attention. So I hope this gives you some idea of how to select the right soaps for your garden recipes. This is the basis that we'll use for making oil soaps, which I'm going to do in the next video. Um, and again, I'm going to stress one more time, anytime you make a new spray, test spray it, no matter where you get the information from, because it's much better to spend the time waiting two days to treat a problem than it is to spray all of your plants, cause great damage, and then, you know, be upset. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please check out my channel and subscribe. I will have a playlist with all the do-it-yourself recipes this year, and I really plan on getting that playlist up to 15 or 20 videos with all kinds of different recipes that are extremely detailed that you can use, um, that you can follow and use in your garden. But, of course, test spray. Thanks for watching.